What's up, YouTube? It's your boy Kenyon. I'm sitting here waiting for a tow truck to come pull me out because uh, I got a load to go pick up tomorrow, but I'm stuck in the snow. I've been trying to get this truck unstuck without having to get called uh, call a tow truck to come pull me out since uh, the, since I got home Friday night. I came back Friday night, tried to unshovel it, shovel the snow out of the out of the way, did not work. And I'm about to show y'all, about to show y'all what a stuck truck looks like. And it's gonna cost me, as an owner op, it's probably gonna cost me anywhere from four to six hundred dollars to get just to get pulled off in the snow. And uh, it's no big deal because I got enough in my maintenance account to do it. I just got a PM due in the next couple of weeks. And that's the big one, y'all. That's the oil change and everything else. So that's gonna cost me anywhere from four to six hundred dollars. So but there's enough in my maintenance account to cover, should be able to cover this tow, and I shouldn't have to worry about the truck going to the shop and them finding anything and still have enough in my maintenance account. But uh, uh, I think uh, before this show, I mean, before this video, I might you, I'm put some pictures on here because uh, we could go. I got Myra. Myra, I got Myra a bath. And you're about to see this truck, and you're gonna be like, "What kind of bath did you give her? Did you just throw, throw water on it? Did you scrub it? No, it was a, she was a pristine looking truck last week. Uh, but you know, that was down south. I got to watch down in Tennessee when I was heading down to Georgia. Had some beautiful weather down there. But come back up north to all this snow, so of course that wash was gonna get done for. Her. So let me show y'all this truck. This is my mistake. Nobody's fault but mine. I'm the I'm the idiot who decided to park this on some snow uh, without no weight in the back, without no load in the back. So, tell y'all, this is Myra. She is stuck. She is stuck in this snow. I don't try to dig her out. I don't see the cardboard over there. I try to use the cardboard to get her out. But Myra, she said, I like this spot. It's nice and cozy. And uh, see that big. That, that drive tire right there, that's the problem, is that, because that's lifted up in the air, which causing the first drive to lose all traction. Now, I know I tried to lock, lock the differential. It won't go. It won't go nowhere. So I'm not about to keep yanking at that differential, because if you yank too hard, you'll drop the drive shaft. This is my area. This is a long view right there. See it dirty. See it dirty, but she was worse than this when I get before I got a wash. Uh, Y'all probably see in the pictures when I edit this video. Uh, but this is 100% my mistake. This is my mistake, nobody else's. So it's my screw up. Uh, <coughs> as you see, I'm parked in a parking lot. This is usually where I parked in my 34 hour break. There was plenty of spots over there. I could have parked this truck and, and been fine. But uh, my, my dumb butt decided to park over there and Myra got all cozy over there and she don't want to leave that spot she said that is my spot taking it from me I am fine right here so I got a tow truck trying to about to come and pull me out of there so I can go leave tomorrow morning and go and go pick up this load going from Richard Indiana going going to Illinois and from Illinois I'm going down to Texas and from Texas, I'm going to be back to, I'm actually, if the load goes right, if I get approved, the load gets approved, I'm going to dispatch, <coughs> excuse me, I'll be going from Texas to Michigan. <clears throat> actually, technically, I'll be going to Texas to Michigan, but actually, I'll be going from Texas to home and then up to Michigan the following weekend. <coughs> so, uh, I noticed I got two new subscribers, uh. Welcome to the 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 vlog. Welcome to my channel. Uh, I'm glad to have you. I know it's been a minute since I've been posting stuff, but I I've been busy ripping and running. Uh, um, and to the guy who asks, it, is the money uh, is it still good over here? Yeah, it's still good. Uh, like I said, they got a low board uh, that we can work off of now. The problem is uh, you have to keep the low boards only showing their clients, customers. So if you go somewhere where they don't got a lot of clients, like say like down in Georgia, they don't have a lot of clients down. They got some clients down there, 
but you got to be careful with going down there because otherwise you're going to be looking for a broker load and um there's plenty of broker loads in georgia but i i i was trying to get a client load out of georgia back up north but uh so i got stuck down there and i had to go get a broker load so i learned that you got to stay you got to stay within where are their customers right is to get to if you really want to book yourself for the whole week so they got a lot of clients down in Texas and um, Ohio, so I'll be probably, I'm trying to get on a sweet run down to Texas and back and Texas and back because those are loads are usually paying really, really good. Um, so uh, those of you who don't know, I'm an owner op for uh, uh, Keller, Thomas E. Keller. Um, if y'all wanted to know more about the company, it's a really good company. Um Look, I had two weeks. I had two weeks straight. Two weeks straight where the truck grossed but five grand, and I took home about two thousand five hundred, two thousand seven hundred for time expenses, fuel, tows, deductions, truck payment, all insurance, all that great stuff came out. So, um, uh, you make there's money to be made here. You just gotta watch your fuel. Uh, that's another thing I, I've I've. I've learned, I've watched my fuel, even though fuel prices are going up, uh, it's like crazy how expensive these prices are getting. Um, but I want to, back to my new subscribers, I want to welcome you aboard. Um, it's a great company to work for. Uh, the dispatchers never force you to run when you, you don't feel safe. Um, if you want to, you like, like right now, since it's winter, my truck don't move until 7 in the morning. 7 in the morning. I told my dispatcher that. I said, look, this truck ain't going to move until 7 in the morning. I don't care what time that load it delivers. Either this truck is going to move at 7 in the morning. The load is going to be late. So I'm just trying to give you a window. When this truck is going to move, I don't care if that load delivers at 5 a.m. The truck ain't moving until 7. So a lot of times what I do is I stay at shippers and receivers to accommodate that. But... If I can't, then the truck ain't, it's going to be late. It's going to be late if it's not due at 8 o'clock or something like that. Uh, um, that's, that's, that's trucking for you. So, um, so welcome to my new subscribers. I am happy to have you on board. And uh, that is my, my predicament. Myra has just got nice and cozy in that spot. And I keep trying to tell her to get out of that spot because we got to go tomorrow morning and she is just steadily just nope i like this spot i'm i'm stay i'm sitting right here and um that is what it is so uh that truck's been stuck like that all weekend so yeah it's, it's usually parked farther back right next well i let me flip the camera but it's usually parked right back like where the, the the bumper usually meets up with the edge of the trailer that's usually parked over here and that's where it's usually parked. It's usually parked all up, tucked up in there. But uh, it's just ain't, it just ain't working. She said that that is it. That's where I'm calling it quits. Um, that's where I'm doing my 34. She said, I'm, "This is the spot right there." So yeah, um, I don't tried everything. I tried kitty litter. I tried cardboard boxes. I tried to shovel it out. I tried my hail mary because I don't got no salt in the truck. Um, and salt right now since that winter storm hit, it's very hard to find up here. Um, so I tried my Hail Mary. I got I had spent the hour putting water on that snow, trying to trying. To, it's just the problem is not really the snow, is the amount of ice under the snow that I gotta melt to get to it, and that's the problem with it. Is the ice is the big issue there. So. Uh, I'm glad there's no puddled water there. Um, the, the temperature got up to 40 degrees up here. So, um, by the time it refreezes, I won't have to worry about, uh, my brakes freezing. Uh, the kitty litter soaked up majority of the water, uh, that was puddled there. So I'm just waiting for this, this tow truck to come out and pull me out so I can go back home and relax and enjoy my evening. 
with my wife. Um, I know I got my. If y'all don't 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 lose my mustache, it's a little overgrown right now. It gets it gets trimmed up next week. Um, right now, I'm not I'm not taming the wild that that's happening over here. So, yeah, um, I know it's been a while since I made a video. I've just been on the go. Uh, I tell you, my last couple of weeks with my paychecks been last week. Uh, I only made twelve hundred. Um, which is still a successful week. And I'm going to tell you why. Because last week, um, me and my wife, we were getting our, we were getting our carpet, carpet redone on, the, in our apartment. And I need to be home by Wednesday. So we left out, we left out Monday morning. So I really wasn't expecting a break even at all with that, with any kind of run. By the end of the time we get home, we're supposed to be home Wednesday night. We left out Monday but we're on Wednesday. We didn't get home to Thursday. I was not expecting to break even. I was like hoping to break even, but expecting not to break even at all. I was about to come out. I was expecting to come out in a hole. And we got to wind up getting home Thursday. And that led to that $1,200 check. So to still come out for Monday and be home by Thursday morning. And only getting like what I think two loads done, and still come out with uh, twelve hundred ahead. That is a win for me. I have not been in a hole at all since I started this lease to purchase. Not one week have I been in a hole. Not even the weeks I, I that not even a week I had my doctor's appointment. I had to be home by um, Thursday, and it was home by Thursday or Wednesday. I still came out ahead. I have not been in the negative in the hole i have not over keller anything all my deductions are usually are met um and so um uh, it's it's been an amazing lease to purchase experience for me uh they treated me very well i think i only got into it with my dispatcher i think we got into it twice but we still good we still cool that's trucking for you. You're going to have to say something, speak up for yourself at some point. Um, but he's really good to me. Uh, he usually try to get me home on when I, I need to be home. And uh, so if you, like I said, if you, you guys are on the birds coming over to Thomas E. Keller, I said, come on over, man. It's going to be the best company. And you come over as a company driver. I'm going to tell you, I was, as a company driver, because I was here for 90 days before I did my lease to purchase, um, as a company driver, my average pay was $1,200 as a company. That's how much I averaged a week. And, you know, after taxes came out and everything, uh, I was still bringing home 1100 a week, just about. Um, I think the most I made as a company driver was 1300 in a week but the truck really uh what i really grossed to 1500 but i came home with 1300 which is really good for a company driver company driver not a lot of companies uh drivers make that much um so it's a really good company to to work for to drive for um they do try to get you home every weekend um and uh they got nice equipment. I got that. You know what you've seen there is a 2019 Volvo 760, I believe. Maybe a 780. I don't know. You think I would know. But I only know my truck by their name, really. So I always name my trucks. So that one was Myra back there. You've seen. Uh, she is beautiful when she's clean. But uh, so... Yeah, I don't know. They got too many Volvos left. To lease, I think they got their freight liners, which I was going. To, I had an option of choosing the freight liner over the Volvo, and I didn't want the freight liner because they got the super singles on there, and then they got that one fuel tank, and I used one of those. I had to get my bunker heater on Meyer. Meyer had a bunker heater problem, so I had to get. My, I had to rent. I had to use one of those freight liners so I can make my that week's deductions and everything, and. I didn't, they were nice enough. They didn't even charge me for that. They didn't even charge me a rental truck for that. 
Um, they they didn't charge me nothing. A lot was responsible for is that week deductions for that 2019 Volvo. They didn't charge me the rental. What they what they wish they could have. Uh, I mean, the next time they if I have to do something like that and get a fix put in the shop, and they're gonna charge me a rental. So if I have to do that, then I'm gonna just sit on it. I'm not gonna go try to make money enough money to um to cover not only my deductions for that truck but the deductions for the, uh the rental truck and the fuel for the rental truck and everything else so i would that would be like i might as well just go in a hole that way because that's what i'm going to do that's what i'm going to do if i if i go out and work with trying to make a truck payment and a rental truck payment so anyway they didn't charge me it um but I used that truck, and I promise you, because I had that one fuel tank, and I my fuel strategy was the same. Put enough fuel to get the run done. And I was putting enough fuel, but I promise you, I was putting more fuel to get a one run done than I was in that tank. Because you got that one fuel tank that you got to last you a whole run. And that run fuel tank, if you if you get something over 600 miles, that you're going to have to come out of pocket to finish that run. Whether with that Volvo, it's got two tanks on it. I could do 600 miles in a, in a piece of cake. I could put that on full and 600 miles be at a half a tank. And uh, so that's the only thing I didn't like about those Freightliner Super Singles. And they have one fuel tank uh, on those trucks. And... Um, I, they, 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 they're... they're in, uh, I just didn't, for me, I just don't like super singles. Bad enough, they have them on all their trailers just about. But I got the Volvo because it's got the duals, dual drives, and the dual uh, fuel tanks. Means I, did, I don't have to, I don't have to stop it for fuel if I put in enough fuel to get the job run. And I'm, and I'm going to tell you how I do my fuel. Uh, let's say... Okay, so this run going from Richmond to Illinois, it's only like, I think, 265 miles. So that's probably going to go on take about maybe 35 to 40 gallons. So if it's bound to be in 40 gallons, I put 20 gallons in one tank, 20 gallons in another tank, and then I, that's what I do. That, that'll that get me to Illinois. And then if I'll go pick up my, where I'm picking up from. It's also where I'm delivering from is also the place I'm picking up. So... That run going down to Texas, that might take me 92 gallons to get down there, um, depending on the weight of the load and everything. So uh, that one, I divide 92 gallons to in half, and that gives me how much gallons I got to put in each tank to get that run done. And usually, I'm spot on. I am spot on with how many gallons. I'm usually off by, sometimes I might be off by like two or three gallons. Those times I'm gonna be, uh, off. <coughs> I think the most time I've been off was ten gallons. That was a complete um, miscalculation there on my part, and I was like, "Dang, man!" So, yeah. But for the most part, I'm only off by two, three gallons. Sometimes I'm spot on where I use the exact amount of gallons I put in. So. You just got to watch your fuel and learn how to fuel. If you ever want to do lease to purchase, your fueling is going to be your biggest challenge right there. You got to learn how to do it. Uh, trust me, this is my second go around as a lease to purchase. My first go around, I did not know how to fuel. And I turned that truck in and said, nope, I ain't doing it. I ain't doing it. I'm going back company side. And I spent about a year. About a year as a company uh before i decided to try to lease the purchase again and i and then a whole entire time i just took a look back of what what i what i did wrong and what why wasn't that successful and what do i need to do to change that and i all came back down to the fueling and i was like i don't think i was efficient as fueling as i sh i could have been um, I probably could have made a little more money, made it worth staying with them. But um, at the same time, there was a lot of things I was doing wrong. I still had that company side mentality, and that was you can't have that company side mentality. If you had the company side mentality, you don't want to keep that truck on full. 
and you can't drive the truck on full when you're on or up. You put enough fuel in to get the run done, unless you are lucky enough to get a run that you um you uh, you can fill that tank up and be happy with what's left over after your your profit. But some of those do pay that good. But um, I'm just saying, uh, you have to sometimes you have to sit back, dust your feet off, pan dust your pants off, fall down, and get back up and and try it again. And that's me what I'm doing right now. I'm trying it again and so far it's been successful. I've taken what I've I've taken mistakes that I made in my first season of purchase and learned from those mistakes and and said, okay, that was a, and, I, and uh that was the biggest biggest <coughs> excuse me reason why I'm successful right now is because I learned from my mistakes. You gotta learn from your mistakes. So all those drivers out there who may have trapped these to purchase and failed at it don't give up on it uh i know there's a lot of bad companies out there there's a lot more bad companies out there than there are good companies trust me i know i've been through a, through a lot of bad companies and it's the first good company i've ever been with um far as professionalism far as them not pressuring you to drive when you don't want to um far as doing it let they let you do they let you drive the truck and the way you you want to drive it so if you're not a person that wants to get up at 3 a.m and run you're not the person that wants to get up at 5 a.m and run you're not that person that wants to do it overnight driving they're not gonna force you to do it they're not gonna force you to do it at all uh, they don't let you operate within your your way you want to operate. Um, so, and this is also speaking from my own experience, my experience, because that's just how they treat me, y'all. That's true, man. But uh, I want to thank you again. My, I'm going to come to wraps on this video. I want to thank my all my subscribers and my new subscribers that I gained. Um, Please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Um, I'll try to put more content out, but trust me, I'm I'm not the type of driver that that kind of sits back and only do like three, three to four hundred miles a day. I'm the type of driver who's gonna push my clock, and by the time I get done driving, I'm done. I don't feel like shooting no videos. I don't feel like doing nothing. I don't feel like looking up nothing. I freaking what I do. I'm gonna tell you what I do when I get done driving. So when I get done driving, I eat, I watch Bob's Burgers, and about 15 minutes after watching Bob's Burgers, I am out. My butt is dead to the world, and the Sandman's got me. Until 7 the next morning. Well, actually, it probably will be usually around 6, because I can get up, maybe take a bird bath or whatnot. So, yeah, uh, I want to thank you, my new subscribers. Hit the like, subscribe button. Uh, comment below uh, uh, if you have any questions, concerns. Um, if you really would like to know what what it's like to be an owner op or at least a purchase driver, and what it takes to 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 be successful at it, and um, how to do it, um, comment down below. Comment down below, and I'll respond to you when I get when I get a chance. It might not be immediately. It might be like in that case, the other subscriber, uh, the guy that, that commented on my other video. It might be three days later, but I will respond. Trust you me, I will respond. I will get back with you. And uh, that's all I got for you today. All you guys, keep the sunny side up, the rubber uh, sunny side up and the rubber side down. I believe I said that wrong, but you know what I meant. All right, peace.